Sunday morning. We just wanted to give you a bit of an update on some of the things that we're doing through Destiny Church, through Man Up and Legacy, Youth Nation, all those wonderful factors that make up um, just the community uh, base that we are. Today, um, delivering our 27th uh, food parcel, um, and that's going to a family in need on Matakana Island. Um, so, as you can see there, the barge. I'll be putting this package on the barge today, and um, that'll be going to the family over there. And one of our church whanau will pick it up and deliver it to the family on the other side. So um, continue to be a blessing and a big two tangata to all our uh, church whanau out there making it happen. Kia ora. The security team down here in Cajun Road, um, just helping out directing uh, the public for our COVID-19 testing. Kia ora. Kia ora whanau. Uh, Derek here, Pastor Derek. And uh, we're just here helping out the community with the COVID-19 uh, testing centre. So my role is um, site leader, looking after the security, and um, Pastor Rena, she's looking after uh, the whole site, admin, everything, nurses, doctors. So yeah, it's awesome to be here. Kia ora. Kia ora whanau. my name is Sheree Galvin. I am planted in Destiny Taranga. I'm out today doing a shop for a couple of whanau who need some kai. Um, great incentive that we've been part of with the government and um, it's such an awesome pleasure to be able to uh, take some of our time for other people. So, kia ora whanau. Um, I am putting the notes um, from the patient and putting them into a tech that we've got on the computer and also sending out medical certificates if they need more scripts. Yeah, thanks for to Tangata Whanau, um, just going out serving others, um, people who can't get out because they might be high risk, um, you know, and, and just serving them, and it's such an awesome thing because, you know, this is this is the kingdom work that we're doing and um, it's got to be active in it. So, yeah, it's a real joyful thing. I encourage you all to be part of it. Fantastic. Well, awesome to have everyone um, um, online this morning. It's going to be a fantastic service. It's going to be amazing. Um, thus far, I've had uh, different people join me to do our pre-service. And um, I don't know about you, but um, I know that uh, you'd be excited just like me, uh, getting amped up and uh, with anticipation, uh, ready for some praise and worship and the word of God from Bishop. But this morning, before we start, team, what I'm going to do is I've got someone that's going to be joining me. So who do you think is going to be joining me this morning to bring our pre-service? Let me count up to three. Three, two, one. Whoa, Mumbi! Hey. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Yelda. Hey, and good morning. Fano. How's it? How's it? Fantastic. Hey, Ease. It's great to have you this morning. Um, just uh, a bit of a welcome. What I might do is I might just uh, give a, a, a bit of a welcome in Māori. And then if we could, because you <laughs> are part Tongan, part Samoan, part Irish, and um, I heard you've got a bit of Vietnamese in you. Um, oh, come on, come on. <laughs> what we might do is just if we could get um, those welcomes from you, that would be fantastic. But let me start. Um, kia ora. Uh, <laughs> well, great to great to see those te reo lessons uh, going into action, but uh, ka, ka, ka pai. 
ya mato tama ya bishop brian tamaki neyaso ya ma emoa mato fi fi ma mato lu lu fa tasi ah neyaso ya ma lo si fo ah ah gibe ofa be ya ke motoru ah ya mato ah ya ma family yeah welcome 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 and uh, did you do the vietnamese one just cuz i know you are you've got a bit of that and you can just do a welcome in vietnamese as well uh, oh, the, I, thought, yeah, I forgot what it now uh, wonton rice noodle soup oh. was uh, but yeah not not today not today yeah okay. uh, uh, <laughs> okay hey awesome to have you um here this morning um just a um, big shout out to all our um to those that are watching has it yeah. been a blessing to um have our bishop um come with a an amazing word come every sunday now. um he's yeah. been coming every wednesday um, and you know, just to that current word that has been blessing us, yeah. that has been helping us to understand what's been happening um, during this time. So, hey, we just want to say, Bishop, we love you, uh, Pastor Hannah, and uh, we just want to thank you um, for um, spending that time and getting that mm. word and um, really just blowing us away. Also, um, it's also been a, an amazing time where we have had the privilege to, even though we're in lockdown, um, that we've been sharpening our swords at ease. And yeah. um, you know, just spending some time in, in, in that secret place. That's so, right. Um, you know, it's been it's been amazing time. Um, also, just a big shout out to our man up and legacies um, throughout New Zealand. Yep, we saw Luchu. Yeah. And throughout Australia, just with all the amazing work um, that's been happening into Arakan and uh, Pastor Jay, um, just with um, you know some of the amazing things that have been taking place. And you know what? That's been happening um, not just here in Auckland, but also. Um, and all our churches, our iwi tapus here in New Zealand. Absolutely. And also in Ahitreiria. So it's just the Māori Ahitreiria, whoa, whoa, uh, which whoa, is that's Australia. A oh, kia ora, kia ora, kia ora matua. Okay, that's... so, um, hey, Ease, um, yeah. Yeah, what, what has life been for you during lockdown? Give us a bit of a breakdown. I tell you, uh, lockdown for us uh, as a whānau has been a real big blessing for us. You know, uh, you know, we live busy lives. We've got a big family. We live, we live busy lives. And... Um, with the busyness is, you know, of course it's, um, you know, being able to uh, to equip and also to uh, enhance the well-being of our whanos that we're doing through Man Up and Legacy, um, through our SOD music. But, you know, lockdown here for us in the Ricky Hutch family is, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time, uh, devotion. Um, we're doing uh, things for our community here in uh, Waymouth, Waimahia Inlet. Um, awesome. We're also, you know, been um, probably putting on an extra bit of weight because of my cooking. It, uh, is, is, can I say it doesn't show? You look amazing, <laughs> my man. No, you, yeah. you look wow. can, can you stand up? No, 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 you look amazing, my man. Right. <laughs> Sunday's best, Sunday's best. Sunday's but anyway, too. let's uh, go. You know, like uh, um, learning how to cut uh, my children's hair. N um, no. Have you been yeah, doing that? I've, well, I've done it to the kid, like the my sort of examples, but I won't let them cut my hair. Yeah, so as you can see, yeah. come on, hey, ease. Now back in my day, my mum used to use a pot, and she used to cut. It. <laughs> did you ever? You got to be honest. Did you ever get one of those haircuts? No, not the pots because usually the pots that we have are quite big. You know because. <laughs> We're, we're cooking large amounts of meat. So when the pot goes over my head, yep. it actually goes over my shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, um, but, um, the experience that I had with hair cutting, you know, mm -hmm. like normal people would use scissors. My grandfather used to cut my hair with a pair of uh, sheep shearer things that you no. squeeze in and out. Oh. And, you know, I'd be sitting in the chair crying and he'd be going, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Why are you why crying? Why are you crying? Why are you crying? And I say, I say, granddad, every time when you pull it up, it's pulling my hair. It, it's it's like pulling. So every time when you pull up, I'd, I'd be like this, like this. But, you know, um, those sort of things come with instructions from Taiwan. So, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hey 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 he's, um just so just just a um I remember a um a name um that you know I've heard uh, people call you at times Father Abraham um you know and uh, just want to explain why they call you Father Abraham Hey look um I don't know who called me that but <laughs> um not that I was going to change my name to Abraham but anyway uh, it's because I've got a a jungle here at uh, fifty three Becker Drive. Uh, got a six tamariki. Uh, Let's go. Yeah, no oldest boy uh, Maxwell's twenty years old. Um, 
you know, all of a sudden uh, this year, oh, wow, there's a hairy fella living with us uh, upstairs. So, um, and then it drops down to the five small ones, um, blessed with uh, a set of twins and their two elders. So, yeah. Father Abraham, yeah, I, I said to my wife, you know, many a time, uh, cut it out. Um, you know, I, 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 I need to have sleep for work. Um, you're, you're acting silly now. You're acting silly. Come on. Uh, let the man rest. Father Abraham had many <laughs> sons. Remember that song? Yeah. Hey, but, you know, anything's possible. Hey, um, ease. hey look at Abraham. Um, you know, and so, hey, anything's possible. Hey? But, hey, yeah. now in terms of um, our, our Sunday best. Um, yeah, our, our Sunday best, you know, Fano. look, there's so many of our families that are around the world, uh, up and down the motu, uh, across uh, over the ditch, over to Australia and stuff. And we'd love to... Um, you know, get some uh, some beautiful photos of Let's you go. and uh, all dressed up and getting ready to go to church. Remember, um, you know, just because we haven't got church in a building um, on a Sunday, we still wake up early in the morning and, you know, we present ourselves to our Father uh, with the best that we have. And, you know, um, it, it's just great when we can come together as a and, and, and to and to be able to do that. So, you know... Take the time, uh, take, take a photo of your beautiful family, you know, getting ready to hear the Word of God or um, getting into worship or praying together. Um, and then to um, add with your photo and a, and a comment from wherever you are, hashtag Sunday best. Let's right? go. Hashtag right. Sunday best. So we'd love to see the photos that are out there. Uh, with the, the multitude of our families that are getting ready for church. Come on now. Yeah. Gotta get ready. Yeah. Come on. Hey, eh? hey and also just um, during this um, time of lockdown, you know, I just want to encourage you. Hey, let's, um, I was thinking, um, you know, what, what's a challenge that we can do? And, um, you know, uh, a challenge has been put out um, and that's the daddy dance. And, um, whoa, whoa, you know, whoa. hey, hey, so um, um, I've been in, oh, well, I can see a lot of, just some feedback. A lot of thumbs, or yeah, a lot well, of... now I can see a, a bit of feedback. Um, they're coming through. Um, who remembers uh, back in the day when they used to wear um, shorts over their tracksuit pants? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so just that was from out of Dave saying that he's, he's he's ready to do his daddy dance, and I'm like, whoa! But he's taking it back. He's taking it back, right back. Oh, well, I, got a, hey. I, I can just see on the live feed again. Um, Anthony the Great has just put something through. He was oh. like, man, man, he's ready to wear his uh, knitted shirt, one of those ones that he used to <laughs> cut and do one of those. Back in the day where fame was, you know, I'm like, wow. Oh, so, you know, you know like he's, I, I can't wait uh, just to see those daddy dancers taking place. Um, oh, hey, absolutely. send them through, put them on Facebook. You know, let's let's just have some um, laughs because laugh, laughter is good for the soul, Wayne. And right. uh, we can put that on hashtag... Destiny Daddy, Daddy. Daddy. Yep. Yeah. or hash, D -D. hashtag DD. Yeah. Let's let's do that. So it's hashtag um, Destiny Dance. Is that oh, right? I was just, I was just or, thinking to you, uh, Elder, you know, especially yeah. those um, uh, fathers that are kind of like 50, 50 plus. Yeah. To remember, there is a disclaimer here, all right? That's so it, if yeah. you pull a hamstring or yeah. a lower disc in your back, you yeah. you know, don't don't blame us. No. All right. We, we're just putting things out there for fun. Is that right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> And, and what, what else have we got, Is Hey, look, um, this week, uh, you know, we're, we're very fortunate to have our beautiful spiritual mum, yeah. Pastor Hannah. Come and on. I love, um, I mean, there was one time that I got on there and, uh, you know, chat with uh, Pastor Hannah uh, on a Wednesday at 1 p.m. So all our wahine, all our wahine tour, um, you know, to log on on Wednesday this yeah. coming at 1 p.m. But yeah, uh, you're going to get some gems there uh, yeah, that she's sure going are. to share every time, yeah. every time. Our spiritual mum, when she gives us something that's going to um, equip us, um, it, it, it's just so valuable. It's it beneficial sure for, for us, yeah. And, 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 and with that, we've also got Bishop who uh, will be doing, um, as, as we know, bringing the word of God on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Yeah. And, um, you know, so... Um, it's a huge um, time of anticipation, getting ready for the week, getting our Ooh. families ready, and um, him just blasting into our lounge rooms. Hey, also, um, I want to encourage everyone, hey, let's continue to bring what belongs to God. Let's continu mm. uh, continue to, um, I want to encourage you with your Tidely app and also your automatic payments. Um, the Bible says to 
um, give cheerfully, not grudgingly, yeah. but willingly with a cheerful heart. So I want to encourage you, Destiny Church, and I know for me it's just a reminder to you because you're beautiful and amazing people and you love bringing and giving over and above. So, hey, just another Absolutely. reminder. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we talk about needing help um, out there, you know, especially for us, um, our our beautiful church, uh, Destiny. Yeah. You know, we're we're preparing food parcels for Fano that are yeah. in our communities that are less fortunate than others. Um, so there's the opportunity for us to to be able to bless the Fano with that. Yeah. Uh, not only that, you know, so you've got your 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 physical kai that we can yeah. fill your tummies up. But the most important thing that I love about our church is the yeah. spiritual stuff. So the prayer. If there's yeah. anyone that's out there for our whanau, individually whanau, whatever it is that need karakia or prayer, right. yep. you know, we have the opportunity with our whanau at church to do that for you. Or yeah. else, um, if you need someone to... Uh, to connect with, just ring up the phone number, the 0800 one man up. So don't forget that number, Farno. 0800 one man, man up. up. That's right. If you need assistance in any of those those areas of yeah, so massive, massive. Hey, awesome. Hey, and um, just as Emil said about um, that uh, encouragement, that's available for you 24 seven. And um, you know, just another um, big shout out to all our man up and all our legacy groups who are out there in the community, who are making a difference. Well, guess what is? Man, we've done it. We've been there, we've done it, and we're on our last um, notice. Hey, so right now, um, I just want everyone to get ready for the Sound of Destiny. Now, they've been um, busy doing some amazing, um, just being busy, just getting together, having a look at creative ways to continue to bring praise and worship. And um, as you've been a part of uh, the praise and worship team for many years, so... Uh, Destiny Church, Iwi yeah. Tapu, and everybody that's online, get ready for a powerful service. Get ready for our man of God. And I know, just like uh, me, you can't wait. And you've got um, expectation in terms of anticipation, waiting for the word. So, hey, ease to Tungata. It's great, tangata. it's great to have you this morning. And oh, it's um, awesome. Nah, what it's a awesome to have you. So, hey, just in finishing, let's go. Let's go, let's go. That's us. So he says by the blood, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the blood that is his flesh. So there's a, there's a better way, a new and living way. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, with full assurance of faith. See? See, that is beautiful. With a draw near, come close to God, folks, have distance.
for my blessing beyond the storm. Sing with me, church.
from our home to yours, I really hope you had a um, nice weekend. Um, we're getting used to um, a little bit more having to be inside because the weather's been a little bit funny. Um, but, you know, that's all good. And I want to say welcome to the trollers and the scrollers with all the things that you have to say. At least I know you're listening, yay, and you're logging in every week with our faithful, loyal Destiny family, Iwi Tapu Tribes. Tu tangata to you. Hey, um, I know that it's been quite exciting, all this online. Um, services but we're going to have the Wednesday off this week um, so I know that you'll be a bit disappointed but we're going to have the Wednesday off make you absolutely more excited for the Sunday and um, the other thing is if you want um, help I put it on our uh, road page for anyone that needed um, food parcels got three responses from that so that's really good so reach out to your community help in your community the other thing is um, ring uh, if you need assistance and help ring our man up line 0800 one man up okay so that's 0800 one man up for um, if you need just someone to talk to you need some sort of assistance you need a um, Shopping delivered, you need a food parcel. Ring that number. So um, here, here comes um, Bishop. So uh, sit back, relax, which you will be, and enjoy today's message. Cool. Thank you. Excellent. <coughs> Good morning. Nice to see you all. Well, I can't actually see you. All I see is a little black square like that, a little round circle in the middle. But I can see your faces smiling, some of you drinking drinks and whatever little wee lollies or other types of little wee goodies you've got around you, in the couch or at a table. But some of you are really dressed up and you're keeping the good old tradition of coming to church still alive by getting up and washing, getting out of the pyjamas, and here you are. But hey, all in all, great to see you all. And as Hannah's already said, welcome to you. I particularly welcome the Destiny Church Movement, the most awesome and the most sensational the most advanced church in this country I know and maybe in the world. A um, bit biased, I guess. <clears throat> but anyway, and all our iwi tapu, and uh, those who are in Man Up and Legacy, look at this, I'm wearing a Man Up t-shirt. And I'm um, today because I'm uh, promoting one of the greatest and the best um, single, what I know, movements or ministries that are helping men, women and families all over our country. So I'm, I'm wearing that today to promote that, and Hannah's given you a number. Also, I wanted to say um, I'm so blessed to be able to have an extended family like Destiny to be praying for us in these times because these are incredibly amazing times. We are in end days, not the end day itself or the last days, but the end day is not yet. But we're in those times. There's a lot happening. Don't be fooled by the comfort of a home, which I hope it is a comfort, and um, we're um, locked up. It's, that in itself is a, is a huge interruption to our normal life and freedoms. Man, I'm like a lion in a cage. I um, don't know how I'm going to go next week, actually. <laughs> but um, but I better be encouraging the right thing, otherwise I'll have all sorts of people over me. I want people all over me and authorities over me for the right reason, not for smaller reasons. And that may happen. Okay, here we go. How many of you really enjoyed last, I think it was Wednesday? And the Sunday before, we've been building something. And I want to really put something in your spirit today as strong as the previous messages. And these are having a lot of take. Um, I'm getting a lot of inquiries, messages. I don't answer them because I can't. I might be there and, and focused on the wrong thing. I keep my head clear, my spirit clear, so I can have revelation for you. And that's where we're going today. So let's get into it. I am... Um, I'm going to... Um, explain some things and try and take some time. I rushed last week. you notice I rushed and I went quite quick to get it out. God bless you guys though, you're used to me. But I'll try and slow down, talk a bit of it, get it all in for you. Here we go. This is a continuation of last week of these um, ancient um, demigods and devils that um, long ago in the ancient world, that is before Noah's flood and after, we're talking about these um, particular devils and their hordes of demons uh, working um, in human uh, affairs, mainly in human uh, governments, uh, politics, and of course nations and people and families. It's very important to see that 
At this time, we need to be um, hearing God's word, but also believing God's word and watching out again. Uh, I warn you, for things that are said uh, in social media, in your ear, from whatever angle, that aren't coming from what you are hearing. Because it's very subtle and a deceptive time. As the world grows in a, in a, a bigger scale to what we are seeing as uh, world events changing, you know, there is this pressure now about getting out of lockdown and, um, and getting the economy going and businesses and people are fearing the worst. Some are wondering what's going on. And there will be an announcement by our government, I would presume maybe, could have been me this afternoon, but definitely Monday or Tuesday next week, whether we're going to come out of this four-week level four to level three. But I want to tell you this, it doesn't matter what levels we're in here, about this pandemic, it's what level you are in, in your mindset about what God's doing. And so I want to touch on that. I want to read a scripture to get us ready for that. And um, it might appear, I want to come from uh, Matthew chapter 10, uh, first of all. Some of the scriptures will come on the screen. If they don't, I'll, I'll probably try my best to pick it up for you. But here's the first one I want to read from Matthew chapter 10. Hallelujah. First of all, Father, thank you for all the viewers. Good ones and rotten ones. <laughs> Had to say that. They're all together. Maybe the rotten ones turn into good ones. But nevertheless, I pray for every person that is viewing today and where this will go. Well, I pray it will move hearts, move people to see what you are doing, Lord. What really matters is what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Cool? Don't forget to start sharing this right now to your friends. Here's this Matthew chapter 10. And this is what Jesus does when he calls his 12 disciples together to him. He calls them to him and he's about to do the first sending of any type of sending for the Christian church. It happens right here in Luke, Matthew chapter 10. Um, he's going to send his first 12 men, just 12. Isn't that amazing? 12 men in himself. Christ changed the world forever and still is. He sends 12 disciples. Now, what does he do? The first thing he does is he gives them power. Power, dunamis. Power, exousia. Both words describe the ability or the right to use the power of God personally. So there you go. When anybody asks you, what are you doing? And you can't do that. Or you don't have the power. You say to them, yes, I do. Because Jesus has given me exousia as authority. He has given me permission to use the power of of Jesus himself. So that miraculous working power is ours. Number two, he actually says in that power, it has the ability to do things that are beyond human ability. That's what we need right now. Miracle working power. So he gives them power. So I want to remind you, if you've got the power, tell yourself, I've got the power. It's not just human power. It's powerful God power. But the first thing he does is this, and this is what I want to put your, your attention to. When any time we step out the door, we go out outside of our, our um, spiritual bubble, uh, outside of the secret place, outside of your house, the first power or the first thing he mentions is uh, devils, unclean spirits. He gave them power over unclean spirits. That's the first place God focuses the attention of believers who are going to do anything to do with his purpose, his will, and his, your call. All right? I have a lot of people, and you know, good Christians, but a bit misguided, who are saying all sorts of things on Facebook, and it shows me how out to lunch, and excuse the expression, that a lot of the church and Christians can be. So you've got to understand, devils are real. Demons would love you to just wipe it away and some smirk on your face as a Christian that says, we don't need to worry about demons, all you just pray. Really? Well, that hasn't worked too well. And you're also biblically not correct. He gave them power, and this Christ himself, God himself in the flesh on earth, he hands to the first humans. Then I'm going to give you power because you haven't got it all yourself. So there's the first point. Second point, what you've got to first of all been, uh, uh, handle and you're going to be confronted with is demons, the force of satanic powers. 
And then after that he says, then you can do all the, the cleaning up of healing, all kinds of things, and the helps ministries, and everything else follows. So I want you to notice that because this is important. I'm not today going to be talking about what Satan is trying to do. He's trying to reduce the church to be natural. But God is trying to move the church into an advancing, forceful kingdom that's going to take over all other kingdoms. Do you get it? One of the things I can say that's come out of well, many things out of this COVID-19 pandemic is that it's actually it's pushed us into kingdom. Because you see the church doors have been shut down as the church as in four walls. But we've always been, and I'm saying this in the right manner, Destiny Church has always been a church outside the four walls. Uh, the, the, for us, the church is not confined or, or limited to just a worship service and praising as we love to do and prayer and getting together to hook up. I'm looking forward to seeing you still all with our faces and our families. But it's outside the wall, four walls in your workplace and your home as it is now within the marketplace and, and everywhere you mix. It's the dynamic of taking the life of Christ and it now becomes kingdom. So you'll see here that he's dealing with unclean spirits because one of the things that Jesus says again in the Gospels, he says, look, he says, when you, when you see demons cast out, when you see the power of darkness confronted, or when you see Christians now, not a not a um, a, um, a, a, a inordinate uh, a focus on demons. That's not us. But you have to know how to deal with them because if you don't, then all the other stuff that they're talking about, the healing, the coming together, and God answering prayer, not going to happen because this world is run by devils. The cosmos, the system. That's what world means in the Greek. Cosmos, the systems. So it says in 2 Corinthians, I think it was 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that the God of this world. Do you know that the word God is used for who? Satan. The Bible is calling Satan a God. And little Christians jump and say, little God, really? Well, you say that when you beat one. And all these Christians that say, that's not right, don't give them the name of God, don't even mention the devil's not worth it. I'd like to know how many demons you've punched over. Probably none. That's how the big their air is, their hot air is, because you know what? When they start to confront something that's demonic, I reckon a lot of them will run away. Christians who have been locked up in four walls in the paradise of a nice music and warm seats and lights flashing, and they don't even know how to knock over the smallest little wee demon called, you know, probably unity or getting on together with other Christians or, or you know, being able to get out and take on the world or take some confrontation and some hate on them. They can't stand it, a lot of them. That is because the demon has made the church and reduced it to a natural institution. Just plain natural, without power. Powerless, impotent. Anyway, Christ comes and he says, listen, my plan has always been the kingdom. And you'll find that if you see the first sign of the kingdom has arrived, hallelujah, mm, he says, it's when I see demons. When you start having confrontations with some of the demigods and the ancient devilish powers that controlled cities and nations and were uh, obviously very openly opposing uh, God and his, his people. See, that's when the kingdom manifests. It's not shouting it, singing a lot of songs about it, which is good, or even praying and making some effort to, you know, the kingdom is something totally different to what I believe the New Zealand church and any churches around the world have been raised on. Because the kingdom is a force of brutality on the powers of darkness. It's a force that comes advancing violently. That's why the Bible uses that word. You get all my knockers now going and saying, oh, God is violent. No, the kingdom has a violence about it toward the powers of darkness. You can't fight and confront these ancient demons that have been here on this earth for thousands of years, twisting the minds and hearts of everyday normal humans. And you know what? They know the craft. Some of these devils have lived for centuries and you just waltz up and think you're going to beat it with a little prayer and a little fast. 
and your song or your worship and holding hands with the other Christians. I know I'm getting strong on this, but the only thing that the devil knows is a stronger force in itself. Jesus said, when you go in to take the goods of the enemy, of the devil in his house, the strong man, he says you've got to go in there and it's got to be a more powerful force. There's a stronger force that comes in and says it binds up that strong man and then sets that house free. You can't go in wimped. You can't go in, you know, some sort of pimple or pimp and, and um, a wimp, all that sort of stuff, and try and pray around in circles and pray from a distance. That's a chicken way of doing it. You know, I'm not going to go there and, and do the actual work and get my hands dirty. I'll sit in my little wee prayer place somewhere in a room like you've been doing for 50 years, 10 years or whatever. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm getting on, I'm coming down on it because that stuff's not worked. Meantime, we've given a free pass to every devil to take our country over, to rob the hearts and the, and the faith and the hope out of people's lives, crush them generationally so they get a curse instead of a blessing. That's what the church is allowed. So the kingdom now must rise. This pandemic is shaking us up. Not that I believe destiny has ever lost that. We've been a kingdom movement. But the kingdom is forcefully advancing and that's exactly what's happening. And it's clear that Jesus says, I think in Matthew 4.23, it says that he came and he preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. I hope I'm not clapping too loud. The gospel of the kingdom of God. I'm getting excited. I'm preaching down. I'm going to preach this little square black thing here call a camera but he was preached the gospel of the kingdom of God that's the gospel of Jesus I know somehow we the gospel's been turned into all sorts of other things you know it's um it's got really soft a teddy bear Jesus and a Jesus that you know has been all but put to bed and and put into a freezer and frozen and and the frozen the saints are frozen so, but here he's saying the gospel of the kingdom. And I like this, Matthew 24, 14. I'm just going to lay this foundation. And it says here, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness, see this, to the nations. And then shall the end come. So one of the great hallmarks of the end times is when we're all talking kingdom and we're speaking kingdom and we are taking kingdom. And we're casting and we're confronting devils. So, you know, you, you can feel it. I know I can feel you through the camera. You know, you're saying, that, come on, Bishop, I can hear you. Oh, that's awesome. Because that's where it's at. That's where we're arriving to. That's what you're waiting to when you can get out of this cage of lockdown and, uh, and start. We're going to roll the kingdom out. Oh, man, are we going to roll the kingdom out? That kingdom's coming and it's going to crush every other kingdom. It will take a hold of every other force and ring and snap its neck. We're going to deal with ancient demons that live back before the day of Noah. You're not playing with any little wee schoolboys here, uh, Mr. Devil, and your ancient demigods. I'm telling you right now, we're going to take you on head on with the power of Jesus Christ and in the name of Jesus. We're going to cut you down, take you out, and we're going to bring back Ah, hallelujah. We're going to bring back Christ to his, his place, his rightful place of being seated, being lifted up so all people can see the faith, the hope, the love, the forgiveness, and the eternal life they can have through him. But right now we need to get back to these things. Okay, so that's good. So here, I want to get back to something because I want to talk about this, uh, these uh, gods, these demigods. And I uh, talked through pretty quick, but we went right back to um, Genesis chapter 11, and we're going back again. Uh, just be patient, because not everybody picks up everything the first time. I've known in my experience, actually, that people forget about three, two or three days after the excited message, it's gone. I can preach this other Wednesday and Sunday to you again, and you'll think it's new today. So that's not to, um, by the way, to put down or to, you know, offend your, your, your brilliance. Okay? But I'm just telling you. So let's go. Genesis chapter 11. It's talking about the Tower of Babel. I call it the Tower of Terror because it is the first, um, it's the first effort by humankind to openly defy and oppose God. Did you believe that? Not long after the paradise and the, the garden and the perfection of the forebears and he blew it and when Adam and Eve blew it and then they were out of the garden, but there was still some 
fresh time and some proximity to perfection where these people could have got it right with God, but they didn't. And so you see immediately Satan moving on the new race. The new race being they lost their power in the garden, so now they're put out into the uh, gorse patch and the blackberries of the world. And now they've got to work for it and they've got to sweat and now they've got to use faith to get back in. It's not just going to happen for them. So here, here's the first, the Tower of Babel is the first effort. And the one leader, that's your first one world leader, was Nimrod. Now that's back in, the, in Genesis 11. And the stories then, it talks about Nimrod. He stands out as being a, a, um, a descendant of Cush, who came from Ham, who was one of the three brothers that came from Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So you'll see through Ham came many of the Arabian the Babylonian and also the Canaanites, which I'll touch on in a moment, that were um, part giant. Remember those ancient demons, again, that cohabited with women. And Nimrod was a demigod more than a, than a, a human possessed by a, a devil, a demon. And so when I say demigod, it's usually half human and half devil spirit. And that's what he was. And that race of giants before and then they came again after, and that's where you find David uh, confronting the Nephilim, the, the Goliath, was a giant of um, a race of giants who were more demigods. So they were humans mixed with satanic uh, power. That's why when you, are, you come into Christ, you are now a human mixed with Holy Spirit. You get it? And so these demigods and these devils, so there are some humans who weren't of the giant race like Nimrod, but they, were also, but they were easily possessed also by demons who took control of them. So Nimrod is the first world leader. And I believe that today I'm talking about the environment that has been set up just like way back then. It's a, it's, again, it's the, it's the word of God coming to pass in our day because revelation is not looking at it just by words and written ink. Revelation is light. That brings it alive and it comes quick to you. And it appears just like that. You know how light? Light is faster than sound. Sound is information. So if you listen to my voice now and you just hear it by sound, all you're going to get is information and you can screw it like my haters do because they just can't get revelation. Now revelation is faster than, than the speed of sound. And revelation has to come by some type of uh, way of transmission like this, but light just appears. That's revelation. It just comes. No actual learning, no previous knowledge, just light. So when you're hearing this now, you're hearing about the Tower of Babel, which was a, a, the first city that was ever built. It was nearly more than a city. It was a monument. And it was the first uh, city built. It was Babel. Babel which means confusion, but it was the Babylonian uh, Empire that was set up. Now, remember the name of Babylonia or Babylon? The name of it in Hebrew was the Gate of the Gods. So somehow this became the common uh, platform or, or place of gathering of an intensification, actually, of the most powerful demons, demigods and high-ranking ancient Devils, which appear in Ephesians on those, remember those five tiers of wickedness in high places and dark places and, and then spiritual powers. So that these levels and there's, there's grades of power in these devils. That's why apostolic churches who have apostles in their movement um, are churches who can only take on these ancient demons. Now a lot of Christians are going to throw their books in the air and their little groups that they join and then their little comments they like making on there. If you're not attached to a, an apostle somewhere or you're, you've got a pastor who isn't and you, you, you are actually disempowered because the Bible's clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 you're saying, where does it say that? Paul says he's a father and he had begotten his churches through his ministry and they were to imitate and listen to his word and imitate him because the apostolic mantle he had on his life 
was recognizable because you remember those demons that were working with other people and they tried to take the ministry outside of proper authority lines and the, um, the sons of Sceva and they were going out trying to cast demons out. You see, this is it. When you start trying to cast demons out, they were trying to say that they were now a bona fide power. A church or our ministries recognize us. When the Christians say we're all the same in the same walker, no, we're not. You could be in a church and you're disempowered to, to front maybe these major demons that are holding and fortifying in governments, holding down nations. You have no power. And that's pro part of the problem and why the church can't have unity because every Christian thinks that they got their own little platform and they got their own little power buzz and they can deal with these things. You can't. And these demons that were trying to work, uh, they couldn't cast these demons out. And they were mid-level devils either. They weren't the big ones that Paul was dealing in a city in Acts chapter 16 when the whole city was taken over by a pythonic spirit. It was squeezing the life out of this, this uh, Philadelphia, the city. And now this demon popped out and said, Jesus I know. So everybody knows that. Now he refers to a human ministry on earth, this devil. So he says, I know Jesus, and we are under his authority, and I know Paul, whom we know he has authority because of his mantle. But they said, who the hell are you little Christians that are not planted and are not under a pastor, and neither are you connected to apostle? And he got out, and they got a beating. Excuse me. <laughs> so... so <laughs> There's a little time here. I'm not sure if people are laughing. It could be all saying, oh man, he's really... Anyway, so what happens? These demons got on top of these, these uh, misplaced Christians, these rebellious Christians, and these Christians that are not connected or planted in a church, first of all, and don't have a human ministry, another person who they're under, taking the word of God from them. Romans 10, he's sent. That's what sent means, apostolic. Sent ones so that you can hear, and those who know those feet, they bring good news to them, and 17 of chapter 10 of Romans says, then faith comes by hearing, not hearing their own voice, but hearing the voice of a sent one apostle. I, I'm, a, I'm making a big deal of this, because that's the problem I see in this country of New Zealand, too many loose, renegade, lone ranger, haven't even got tonto, at least Lone Ranger had Tonto. Some of these fellas, they don't even have Tonto. They're out there by themselves trying to change the world. They do good works, and that's all they can do. And then they Facebook themselves by, look at the good works we're doing. whoopee do da day. Salvation Army does that. No offence to the Salvation Army, but they've got good at good works. But they can't confront demons, and they certainly won't confront these, uh, these uh, high-ranking demigods and devils that are taking over governments now, they can't. All they do is be slaves to them. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want to stay here too long, but getting out, so I want to make this clear. That's why with my church and the people that are here, we are tight and right, submitted to apostolic voice. And if you wander from that, I want to tell you today, oh, as Bruce Lee does it, come back, come back, because it's dangerous out there and you'll get your block knocked off. Just going to say it. You have not got the mantle. They'll just run you over and say, who are you? So they know. All right. Now, we're getting back to this. So, so ancient Babylon. And the Hebrew means the gate of the gods. So what happened was there was a plan. So after hundreds of years of humanity to the ark, then what happens afterwards he, they come together and they realize that their force and power to... See, this is the total plan of satanic powers. They want to actually eliminate Christ and his kingdom and his sons of God out of the picture totally. That's their goal, to remove the sons of God and the sons of the kingdom. They want to prevent the kingdom coming so Christ cannot appear or... The, uh, the prophets rise up and the church rise up to face the Antichrist and to face the one world leaders and the concoction they're cooking up. But I'm putting it out there now. They'll be damn P-I-S-S-E-D 
off with this. <laughs> I have to say this because that's how they, they talk in their language. Maybe not watch me use that word. They will be absolutely, yeah, that word off that I am putting this right across the screens of the public and people and families are listening to me. Listen, if you're a family that's new, or you listen to this, you've got to better start believing that there is demons, invisible spirits. You ever heard of your son or somebody or your daughter or people talking, they say, I don't know what got into them. There you go. Most people who don't believe God or believe demons always say, I don't know what, what got into him. What was he thinking? There you go. All you're thinking is, there are smaller level spirits. There are spirits that influence us to do wrong, to take on stuff that's not right and to say and do things to each other that are abusive and harm. That's a spirit that comes from within. Of course, I'm not taking responsibility away from our behavior and our actions as our people and our will. But it's very difficult once somebody gives up or has yielded their will through drugs, alcohol, all sorts of deception and people and friends and associations, and soon you've got a spirit. That's why all those who are into drugs, are, they, they gather together. Birds of a feather. Those who are into chasing the god of mammon, well, I'll get to, and Jesus talked about mammon. Then they sort of cluster together. So there are cluster groups around a certain behavioural uh, activity or way of thinking, and it's caused by demons. And they get them together so that they strengthen the behavior and force and power by numbers. Okay, same with God. He does the same thing. All counterfeit. Copy. So, let's get back to this. Now, the, the ancient, why am I talking about Babylonia? Because that's the power, the Babylonian spirit is the spirit that was through Nimrod. They raised the god called um, Marduk. And I talked about the god Marduk, who was principally the spiritual power that unified many other demigods, who Nimrod was a physical manifestation of it. What did he do? At that time, it says he pulled the whole world together. He pulled all people together. He had one language. They had one mind, and they were going to build a one world government. So there you got it right there. The Tower of Terror was really a platform where demons can operate from into the earth. So they need access from the spiritual world, the unseen world, into the material world. The Tower of Babel was like the connection point between positive and negative. If you know what I mean, that's how you get a battery or power to go from a positive and a negative. So, you, so the negative was the demonic power that was there waiting to get access and the positive entry point into this world for them was when they decreed that they were doing something totally in opposition to what God wanted. So what was that? It was, it was demonic oneness. Demonic unity. So right now you've got people around the world, globally, who are in agreement about globalism. So the Tower of Babel with one world, so Nimrod was the first one world leader. He was the first one to come out from the others and began to be recognized as the leader who built this tower of terror that contained some of these ancient demons that were ready to rip the human race apart and to eliminate Christ's ability to have access back into this world because he takes out the positive entry point into the spirit world. That's when the sons of God, it's when, the, when the, everything in the kingdom becomes comes together. See, you notice, he's restricted by this gospel of the kingdom, has to be preached in all the world, then the end will start coming. Then he talks about then certain things that had to take place before. So there is restraints, but Jesus can come back any time and, and take us, but there's still the program of the Father. And we can delay it or we, and keep it safe for our future generations so they can live in prosperity, health, and in relationship with God or we drop the ball and messages like this are not taken serious. That's what happens. So let me get going quickly. So I talked about Marduk. That's the god of building global empires. This, this stuff happening today is not new. 
It's been around before many governments right back to that day because that's the first global empire. Globalism was there. They were already building a one world order right there at the Tower of Babel, Tower of Terror inside. And I'll get to that in a moment just to recap. So when they did this, that God, that image on the top floor was... Um, Maradak or Marduk, which was the spelling in Jeremiah, and the scriptures are there. You can get them off TV here or write in and get these scriptures, and we'll show you where this. I've been through it, I wouldn't be talking about it if I wasn't confident what I'm talking about is from God's word, and it all connects up. So, Marduk was the God representative that he was an empire, a global empire building. So, when the people came together, that was the, the uh, incense or the smell of the demonic atmosphere and environment he he had built through Nimrod and certain other individuals, there's many of them had come into an unholy agreement to have a one world order. Yeah. And that one world order needed a, a one leader that arose out of it. It's Nimrod, the first world leader. So the parallels when it goes to this means that they had to have a, a sort of very liberal a secular, humanistic style of government, meaning that if it was liberal, liberalism is around today. What a liberal is? A liberal is just somebody who just doesn't accept or believe that Jesus Christ is who he is. And it's then when you have that breakdown, you have all, the, all the, uh, the walls of protection for our lives and for our family, for our economy, for our social gatherings, it's all broken down. And then you get these other things that get access to. And I'll talk about it. They start perverting them. They start getting ugly. And you get all the abuse. You get all the rip-offs. You get the corruption. And you get all of this stuff that gets further and further away from God. So you can see what I'm saying now. So any, all the governments of this world were liberal, secular, humanist. And then they have a, global, a globalistic um, tinge in them or spirit. And this is what this uh, Marduk spirit who goes through the centuries, the people he, that are serving him, that he, he possesses or he influences the humans, they die, but he lives on because he's a spirit. His consignment is, is um, Hades in the end of the day, but that's after all these events. But till then, he has influence. He's here working in this country right now. He's worked with our government. He's worked with the Labour Coalition, with New Zealand First and the Greens and others. That is Marduk, is that spirit in there. Open borders, a borderless world. Because they were all one. But because it's shown by what God does, he comes and he sees the evil of this. He knows what it is. He knows that Tower of Terror has not just got Marduk there, but underneath there is Chemosh, the Ammonite god, who was later on going to appear in the, with the Canaanites, and the Canaanites and all of the other ites were those who were already in the promised land. Remember, before Israel, God's people were sent to the promised land. Guess who was in the land? It was all the Canaanites. It was the Ammonites, the Moabites. Funny that, isn't it? Because people say to me, how did you get Chemosh, or Chemosh, that God, who was the God, and his, and his name Chemosh means violence or um, the um, murder. That's what it means, violence and murder. That's what Chemosh means. That Ammonite God was in the land that the Israel people were supposed to... to so how we come to that? Because that's his name. Now realize this, the Canaanites and all the other ites in there, that's where the Arab world came from. And how do we know that? Because he's a descendant of Ishmael. Mm. Now we're getting somewhere. Because the demigods, the half-giants and humans were right through to that time and their last appearance was going to be with David when they were um, David confronted them but before then they were in the promised land now get this they were in the promised land because Ishmael was the son of Abraham but he was not the planned son that God had Ishmael was a work by the hand of man when God came to Abraham when he thought he couldn't have jo when he was uh, sorry is impotent but he believed in God and faith and his wife Sarah. He said, I will give you a child of promise. That, of course, was Isaac. But you know what happened? They got impatient. They didn't believe the promise was coming quick enough. They just, how, you know, we do it. We just lapse. You go off guard. 
We get pulled away, and you know what? And we open up and we make a decision that's going to produce a bugbear, a, a thorn in the side forever in Ishmael. Now, Ishmael came out of the Hagar, who was the maidservant, who was, of course, a Ammonite. There you go. Now you get in it. So Ishmael was actually still a, um, a son of Abraham, but remember the story was that Isaac was the promised son, Ishmael, and then uh, Sarah said, get rid of this boy here. He's not from the promised womb of Sarah. She, he, he's from the Arab tribes, and um, he can't stay with Isaac because that is the promised one. That is natural or spiritual Israel. We're from the Isaac line. We're actually spiritual Israel. We're the action right now. So Isaac was the promise. Ishmael wasn't. Now, a lot of Christians are into this. They, 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 are, they are actually worshipping Ishmael. And I'll tell you why. Because while he was pushed out, God said, but Ishmael will rise up to be a very powerful nation. Twelve princes. Palestinian. The Palestinian, all of, all of the Arab world, the Middle East, comes from there, except for Israel, which is the promise with Isaac. Now you see what I'm saying. See, the scrap is still going on today. You know why the Canaanites and all of these people were in there? Because Ishmael still had partial promise from Abraham that he would be blessed. So that's why God couldn't not bless him. And he could not say that you'll be powerful. And when the, when the promised land was opened to Abraham's descendants, voila, there's the revelation for you. Ishmael had a right to go in there and be squatting in the promised land because he was still an offspring of Abraham. That's where Chemosh was. Now you see why Islam came from out of there. Very easy now to see once I've explained to you, I'm sure. But Chemosh was that God they set up who where the violence and um, the whole aspect of Murder was a part of his nature. Unfortunately, that's a part of the Islamic movement globally. In much, many parts of it, in most parts of it, it's born out of that God. So it's in there. And you've got to recognize this as not being some sort of just a, a happenstance or a fluke. You've got to listen to what I'm saying. They were in there all the time. And that's why when God said to them, and the other one was in there, was Chemosh, the, the, the Ammonites and the Moabites. Both of them were Moabite and Ammonite God, the Palestinian. So the other one, who was um, Molech, was the God that they sacrificed babies to. Well, how? It's not a coincidence that you find Chemosh, who's with the Islamic, with Muhammad, and that religion coming straight out of that God, and then you have, you have abortion happening already. So you already have it in the spirit of these gods, these devils, those two big streams there. Now, you, t you can't tell me this is some sort of fluke because I will take you. Can you put up 1 Kings chapter 11? And if you go 1 Kings chapter 11, that's why I want to take a little time. I hope you, you do. 1 Kings chapter 11. Remember last week I read this to you about Solomon? And, and, and here's the reason why when God came to the Tower of Babel, he did the opposite. He said, we can't have this globalism. That's not my plan, to have all the nations piling up together and having open borders and then, and then having multiculturalism. And then you are not heeding to what I'm saying because I'm about to change all your languages and I'm going to push you to all your separate countries now, for all those Christians going to bark at me and say, that's not right, well, you're wrong. You might say that's Old Testament. Well, go to the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 26, where God says in the New Testament that he had signed the boundaries of all races, nations, and peoples. And he did that on this one reason. Listen to me carefully. Because he knew that taking in and mixing with other pagan countries that did not worship and hold God like Israel was supposed to, you shall have no other gods before me. So Israel had to carry by race and gene and their religion, which was pure and undefiled religion, was the one true God, is Jesus Christ. They were to never allow the influence of mixed nations and other peoples bring their gods and their twisted up religious perspectives. Man, I hear that all over the place on Facebook, don't you? 
yeah, I wish this God, and they've got a name and they say it and then they, they thing it to Egypt and they thing it to this one and that one connects to South America. It's all rubbish. That's why I'm giving this truth. And so he did not want them to mix in Psalm 106. Psalm 106, read it there. He says, they have now gone to idols and accepted their images. Now that's just something on the mindsets. It's not even putting up a mantelpiece God or touching devils, but Christians who have images, the wrong images in them, he said, because they're mixing with associates at work and your neighbours, Fano, that don't know Christ, they start to influence your thinking. Ah, oh, I'm right. And you start, you, people are easily swayed. So if you don't have a strong conviction of the truth of Jesus, then you're open for every wind of doctrine, every thought. Mainstream New Zealand sits in that pocket. I'm, I'm neither really, I'm not a religious person. They say they're the most religious people on earth because they think not having a God or the right God to name, you're open game. You can't name, you're open game. And so if Christ, who is the way, the truth and the life, is not in your family, then your children or you, if you've done it already, have already adopted a God, humanism. Meaning the, the, you are your God, and um, boy, that's trouble, isn't it? When you think and know yourself, mum and dad. But what about your children? They pick up all sorts of, of ideologies and all sorts of thinking and, and beliefs and they go into all sorts of stuff and swayed by friends because if you are not got a set conviction, you're going to be moved by somebody's a good talker, somebody who's going to influence you, peer pressure and the wrong associations. That's why... God said, I don't want you to allow the mixture of these idolatrous countries, their thinking. It's like on Facebook and social media again. I'm going to modernize so you know. When you see the proliferation and the spewing into, into Facebook and, and TikTok and, and Instagram and little wee ways, the images. See, the images are more on TikTok and Instagram. Image. God said, you shall have no other idol or image. An image is something in the imagination that sits there long enough to challenge the throne of Christ in your head and your heart. Wow. Got to watch it. They think, oh, no, I'm okay. I'm part of youth nation, part of a man up in legacy, whatever. But it only takes a few images. If you're not strong enough, you can watch telly, you can watch the movies, you can go on social media, but you've got to always keep that place, that hallowed place in your heart. That's for Christ. And when the danger of something... He does it to the best of us. You've got to watch the idol and the image that tries to get you to take down Christ. Christ is the way. He's the only answer. So, so getting back to this, it says here, look at this in chapter 11 of 1 Kings. And I'm talking about Chemosh, the god of Islam. And I'm talking about Molech, abortion, taking child sacrifices. It doesn't matter. I'm not talking or putting any condemnation on women around the country or the world who hears me saying this, but I want you to hear this, ladies. You didn't know what was happening. We, don't, we didn't know. And oftentimes we're thinking of us and our bodies and the situation, but when nobody sees the unseen force that is ancient, you're not the first one to have an abortion, and neither will you be the last one because this devil's powerful. And it is a sacrifice that so every baby killed in the womb. I had to ask this question. I said, Lord, why are these two? So these two are named in verse um, 7, where it says that Solomon built high places for who? Look at this verse. For Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and who's the other one? Molech, the abomination of the people of Ammon. So this verse says these two together. So what I'm, I'm exposing to you, and the whole thing's out now, those devils are in trouble because I'm putting it all over social media and online. So when your friends get this, or people, when you hear it even, you're going to see now why that abortion is so foul and not right. And why is this religions, you know, other religions building their temples and their mosques and, and other people believing whatever. Hey, what's the deal? You believe Jesus? Leave it at that, but let people free. No, 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 you don't understand. It's not about freedom to believe anything. That's the freedom that will take you as a false trail 
to bondage. Only Christ can set you free. He who knows the Son will be free indeed. Jesus says, come to me, because I'm the only way to the true God, Father. If it doesn't go through Christ, it's false. If it doesn't recognize Christ as God, it's false. You shall have no other gods before me. Probably a lot of the problems you're having and the problems that hang on and go with you and your family seems to be embroiled in all of this, this tension and stress. and that's, It's demons, unseen forces. Suddenly you lose it, anger in the bosom. It's heat. It's, it's spiritual. First thing a person can do is say, in Jesus' name, you can stop. It's hard, I know. I bind you up, you foul thing, and trying to get me to be angry. Or you foul thing, I'm going to hold my peace. Oh, I want to strike back. I want to write something. I, you know, we're all at that, that level. But what it does, it means it deflates you and defeats you so that you can't get into the kingdom on the battlefield to face the Goliaths if you can't kill the lion and the bears at home. Yeah, I'm getting off track now. Am I going too long? Okay, I'll just wrap this up and, and, and bring it to you. See? So people thought I was just taking stuff from today, trying to stick some um, Christian scriptures to it. No, 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 no. It's right here. That's no coincidence. And neither is it a coincidence because they were already together. So the unleashing of that Tower of Terror, as I said last week, now I'm just getting this so you, you know it. You'll see that ancient devil. So I know exactly how to defeat this thing when we go out of here. I know exactly how we can roll his kingdom. But, but just get this. He was set up on the top of that Tower of Babel. And Marduk, who was the global build of the empire, bringing everything to one. That's going on right now. But what happened when, when he was released, when he was accepted and released into the earth, that came through globalism, open borders. Governments of the world. So these demons are not coming from the bottom up. They're going into politics first and down. So that's why the church who has been deluded in thinking that we don't touch politics, we don't get into... Look, people say, should uh, church and state ever mix? And I'd say, well, separate. And I'd say, well, in some things they are separate. The church and state are separate in some things. And people get upset, I see them, oh, you don't pay taxes, get off the grass, I'll be in prison by now, you're all silly and out off the, off the face when you say that. Of course we pay taxes for when we're paying, but charities are tax free and so are we, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you say the church shouldn't be involved, then there are things that we shouldn't be involved in politics, but God and politics definitely go together, they're they not separate, God's involved in everything. So if God, my father, and Jesus was involved in politics, and the apostles were in the early book of Acts, it says they caused upheaval in every place they went. And it says the Roman Empire was against them, and of course the religious institutions were against them, and the Gentiles, that was all the people who didn't take any really credence to Jesus Christ, or they were just neutral and they just believed whatever, they were against them too. So they have every organisation rose up, and it was demon-inspired, and they fought the apostles and the early church to try and intimidate them, to fear, get fear on them, but most of all, to doubt themselves and their leadership and every, every one of them, to thinking, this is not right. Our Jesus walked in love. He didn't go around attacking people, this is what they say. <laughs> really? He started very early in attacking in the church. He attacked the money changes. He used the whip to do it. These were people who were actually up, right, out front, rotting and using stuff and not doing it properly. That's what the devil's trying to accuse us of, and it has, it's not even true. We wouldn't be standing here preaching like this and doing so well as we are. And the high court chucked out all of your guys' attempts, you little devils, to try and accuse us of some type of tax evasion or charitable status on the threat. And the, the High Court came in and said, this is actually discrimination against this movement. Of course it is, because it's those demonic powers working in these fools to try and get people to think that Destiny Church... Well, that's what I'd do if I was a devil too. Put Destiny Church all over the place. Look at it, we're, we're on headlines with stuff 
and Herald, they put a headline, Nest Nature, it's got nothing to do with us. And then when they do, it, it, it's a very trivial part of us and it's a very small amount of, of legitimate claims for the subsidies that are happening right now. And everything, and you see the outcry, they just see the word destiny, or they see Hannah Tamaki's name, <laughs> and uh, they see my name, and uh, they go ape. And so they should. You ought to be concerned, other church people and pastors and leaders, that nobody knows you, your name's not known in hell or in the community, um, in places. I mean, the enemy, the devil, needs to know you. There needs to be confront, confrontation and there needs to be where we are standing up to them. But look, right now, I sort of, sort of get to this and Psalm 102 says the same thing, 106 I should say, where it says that when these two spirits came together, they were unleashed through governments. Isn't it amazing? Now you see how this secular, liberal, globalistic sort of open border, multiculturalism, and, and then when they opened those borders, immigration opened up. What immigration did and, and refugees was the United Nations, which is a part of the Tower of Terror. The United Nations is an organisation that is totally riddled with demons who work with Marduk, I guarantee they work with Shemos, and they work with also uh, Molech. Now there's another one, uh, Ashtaroth, which was the, the goddess of sexual perversions, the Sidonian god, and she's mentioned right next to these ones in here. So in 1 Kings 11, with Solomon, unfortunately for him, and what he did, God gives us and he puts them all together so you can see that we're fighting demons. So when you talk about the goddess of those sexual perversions, it's talking more about the takeover of the LGBTQ, whatever it is, community. You're talking about the sexual orientations being um, misused and also defiled and perverted from how God had a man and a woman who he created, the two to be one, and they're a male and female. And when you see the distortions of that, and then it grows out of it, a movement that then has political aspirations to join up with globalism and the liberal left. And then for some reason you find Islam in recent times getting favour with the same sort of events. People are saying, how, does, how, does, how is it that all the immigrants and refugees are coming from the Middle East and the U United Nations ordered New Zealand government, but it was no sweat because... Our government, with the Labour government, and Jacinda Ardern and with Helen Clark pre previously, are both deeply connected and demonised with the United Nations agenda, with the, the World Health Organisation, and I'll talk about the International um, Monetary Fund in a minute, and the World Bank, <laughs> oh yeah, Mammon, that's the other one that Jesus confronted and said, he's the other God, and the only one he names is, is, is a major ancient devil and calls it by its name Mammon, which is the god of money. But let me get back to this. And so the United Nations says you are to take these refugees from uh, the Middle East, uh, from Africa, and from Asia. Now, all those African nations within Africa, of course the Middle East, and um, the Asian countries, this is no coincidence. They were all 100% uh, um, Muslim, so Islam. So now you find, because these gods work together, Shemosh, the god of Islam, and you have Molech, who's, he's coming to his own soon, who's a, the god of abortion, then you have this, um, uh, this, uh, this Marduk, who is now pushing and opening up the borders of the world, so now we had this big swing of multiculturalism, and look what it did to Europe. That once they got in there, guess what happened? It ruined the character of those countries. It virtually stole away the English culture, the French culture, the Belgian culture, the German culture. And these prime ministers, and some of them were too liberal. You see, they got caught, and they got caught up because it's the spirit driving them. And they, they, they deified and made it a virtue as multiculturalism. It would be great for them all to mix. And even... 
neutral people who, hey, this is all too much, but listen to this. They found out by the time that their country was changed, their values were stolen. Then there appeared mosques and there appeared temples all over Great Britain to the point now that 52% of the most English city in the world, London, is no longer um, predominantly British. It's 52% now non-British. <laughs> wow, think about that. And you're saying, well, I'm glad it's not here because poor old Europe and France and Germany, their countries, now they're closing borders, see? They're closing borders. Should have done it a long time ago. The pandemic wouldn't even come in here. They're closing borders. They're shutting down the move of these refugee immigrants because they're taking their country down by bringing their gods we think they're being compassionate. We can be compassionate to refugees and I would reach out to them and I'd go in the midst of them, but I would give them Christ because he's the answer. But they brought their gods and they took them into a nation and that's what took their countries down. Every country that's predominantly and strongly Muslim is either in, in um, internal uh, strife and war or the country, is, the environment is taken down. Literally, it literally rips it apart and it just skins it. Because these gods, these false gods, these demonic gods, they're takers, they're eaters, they're consumers. They will literally eat you out from the inside. That's why you have the rise of cannibalizing nations. Nations that cannibalize like China and India and, and some of the other countries who are, who are going into other countries as hosts. And from within, they take their resources and they move their e economic powers can I just touch on this before I go? Can you see it all now? And now you can see, and then these governments now and ours recently also made it legal law to abort babies up to nine months old. And with all the other type of um, attachments and recommendations, like on gender, if you didn't want a girl, you can abort it because you wanted a boy. Soon they'll be going even more evil into this. I want you to see this because it's a part of the plan. And you'd think, how does Muslims, though, and Islam mix with the liberal left, who in their countries will not allow Christian churches or Christianity? That should tell you something. And they will also chop the heads off those who are gay. And they will, they will take away the woman's rights, cover them up, and there will be no such uh, perversion. In some ways you'd think, well, that's kind of but they're cruel, but do you ever hear the LGBT community and uh, the gay community rail on Muslims and Islam? No, you don't. Of course they won't. Why? Because the same devil that's in the one that's in this one is the same one that's in that one. So the commonality underneath draws them and ties them and they don't even know why. Why wouldn't the, the gay community be railing on the Muslim community because of what they, how they treat gay people and ill-treat women? Not a word. Instead, they'll attack Brian Tamaki and Christian churches, if I can find the other ones. They'll attack them because that's what we're fighting. Now, I hope you, because you're sitting on the couch, I'll even finish ages ago to this last one. Here's, here's another God, and it's in Luke chapter 16, verse 13. Jesus talks about the actual, he talks about money and riches. Now, money's not evil. You can have money, but as long as money doesn't have you. That's where he's talking about the power of it, though. You might not say, oh, you know, I've got no influence of money in my life. It doesn't drive me. It doesn't take my affections away from God or my family. I'm not thinking about money more than I'm thinking about God. and you know, I think I might be touching a few of us on here. But, you know, it's not wrong to want to have a living and to do well and build business or be a good employer or employee and to work so you can build wealth for your family. That's a noble thing. But you've got to see that it's not chasing the money and it's not allowing yourself to acquire money through dishonest ways. And, be, and get into the whole world of crime. But Jesus is interesting. He says this. He says, you can't serve two masters after he says he's talking about, he's talking about money having you. Because Ecclesiastes says that money answers everything. 
And there are scriptures, obviously, that Jesus uses about going and building your business and making money in those parables. But here's the thing about mammon. Because you can put him up now next to Chemosh, and next, next to Molech, Ashtaroth, the goddess of Sidon, and you can put him up there too with Marduk, the Babylonian prince. Oh, I haven't even got time to get to Revelations 18. Talk about the next pandemics. Do I? Someone's saying you do, you do. Well, let's, let's look, look at this. So the International Monetary Fund. Jesus says you cannot serve me, God, or mammon. That's the only time in the New Testament he is actually in contest with another ancient god. In fact, Mammon was a Syrian god. It was at roots and its origins was from Syria, which comes from the same place as all the, the um, Middle East and the Canaanites and Ishmael. See, that, that's a lot of it because what that disdain and that real hatred toward the people of God. You've got to know when you're hated, you know you're loved. Jesus says, if they hated me, they will hate you. So here, here's him saying, here's me, Jesus Christ, and here's this God called Mammon. And I think there's a figure of him. We got him up there as one of those entities. But it's not the entity, it's the spirit in there behind that entity, that image. So Mammon was a God who actually controlled the econ economies and the flow of money, and he used that power to distort, to corrupt, and to put greed in the hearts of people. Because really, money is the most powerful force to control whole nations, governments. So let me say this very quickly, because it's all the time I have. But you will see that they all work together now we're facing now an, ec an economic probably meltdown, nothing like it since the depressions in the 30s. Now, I want you to see this very clearly because this is going to be a, a big part of it. You, you have to understand as believers that we need to be aware of mammon. Because if Jesus says that this God and I are in direct context, it's the only one he named in the New Testament and said that you'll either serve me or you'll serve him. You will... Love one of us and hate the other. That's pretty powerful in verse 13. That, that's he's, he, the acknowledgement of how powerful these demons I've been talking to you about today. That Jesus actually brings one out and says, here it is and here's me. This is how powerful these, these demigods, these devils are, these ancient devils that I'm talking to you about today. That's how powerful they are. He puts it next to him and he says, right. So how does that work? How, do, how am I influenced by that? Because... At the end of the day, you've, not, you've got to understand that my God shall provide all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. There it is. That's why Jesus is saying, I'm not going to give you all the answers because I can get money to you easy. I can get a fish and give it to Peter. I pay taxes with miracle money. But he says, I can set it up where you can get business going for you Christians. I can bless you more than the others. But you've got to acknowledge me that I am your provider. How's your tithing going? How's your giving going? How's your first fruits going? See, we'd make excuses in this very trying season. And Bishop, the jobs, I'm not saying anything about you having to give. I never do. But as me, I will never do that. And no matter what the circumstances, I'm not defined by what's happening around me to change my convictions. And it's a very, a very close, idolatrous thing for any Christian to say, because of the pandemic and because I've got no job, I cannot give anymore. So I'll take away the first fruits. I'll take away the offering. I can't tie there. I have to stop the, the payment. And you know what? I'm going to get right now. The haters are going to town. Oh, they've been waiting for this segment. But I'm talking about mammon, and Jesus holds himself up, and he's not hiding the fact that money can take you down at the end of the day when nothing else does. Because the moment you pull that like that, what you're saying is, I am actually trusting mammon. Have a look at the ugly turkey on the um, advertisement title. You're taking Christ, the supreme love, faith, hope, the eternal one, the one who loves you, redeemed you, and died and rose again, that you would let money dictate to you. The economy is not going to save us. 
Christ saves us. He said, I'll provide. That's why God, Jehovah Jireh, was I am your provider. God is really allowing it to happen to just see where we really are. If the idolatry is in the heart somewhere. So I won't touch it. That belongs to him and that's part of it. But coming a bit further, I want to just quickly say, so we're talking about the United Nations is in connected to the International Monetary Fund. The International Monetary Fund is an organisation set up by the United Nations and by nations around the world to be there as a financial um, backstop to actually be there to loan or lend to countries that get into trouble. Recently, a while back there, you'll see in, the, in Europe that there were some hard times and there was a bit of a, you know, inflation blew out, this stuff happened, and this is what happens with when you try and think and get smart with, with money. Like right now, there's things happening that you wouldn't even believe. But Greece went broke, liquid, liquidated. Greece totally ran out of money. The debt, inflation got so high in a country, and when uh, I have actually been there once and seen it, and I was just horrified by some of the, the poor broken down buildings and the streets and we didn't stay there long actually it was it might have changed it's tried to come back but it's never the same but the international monetary fund moved to actually save it i don't know what goes on behind the scenes but i'm pretty sure that that is also um influenced by mammon the god mammon because there will always be the controlling nature in there if you're talking about the united nations which is governed by these these ancient demons, and that's connected to whatever's connected to the United Nations. So you, you see the, the migration pact that the United Nations has really pushed on countries, and that Winston Peters and um, Jacinda Ardern and the Greens happily signed, which is opening the door. They just don't see the gods and the false idols, and the, they don't see this all pouring in to take away our future and our countries. But the International Monetary Fund is connected to the United Nations. So here now, you see a Tower of Babel being built. But hold on a moment. The International Monetary Fund was supposedly went broke almost after trying to bail out Greece. Then I see just the other day, two days ago, that they have just got on tap now trillions of dollars. Trillions. So you go hundreds, thousands millions, then billions, then on top of that is trillions. I think squintillions out there, but trillions? Suddenly a broke organisation has got trillions. Are they printing it probably when they, when they need to? And, and those who are in charge? But hold on a moment, the International Monetary Fund is connected to the World Bank. Now the World Bank is now connected to Five or six of the richest people in the world who actually are behind and driving the World Bank's agenda. Now you're seeing where will this connection... But hold on a moment. The World Bank is also, apart from those rich listers, those one percenters, half percenters, but the other half of these percentages are certain financiers or ex... Some of them are ex-ministers in politics who have now moved on, or some of them maybe of the eight uh, wealthiest economies in the world. So now you have a conglomerate of these certain people. Now, I'm telling you right now, they aren't all walking up there, busting out Jesus' name and singing, singing hallelujah, thank you, Lord, we're going to fix the world. Quite the opposite. It's the Tower of Babel being built again. And you can see it. Don't get me on some of these other things that I look at you about what the banking systems and then you look at um, how the governments are going to handle this. So this whole kick into the economy is being done and allowed so that God can cut it off now there before the control and the perversion of the doctrine of these idols and these demons didn't overrun people. It's jolted people that I'm talking to to think again about where Christ is in your life. It's time for you now maybe to bring your family and your life 
with Jesus Christ to the right place because what I talked about today is happening. And I want to take the time to bring Revelation chapter 18. Now you can go and read it. Verse 1, I think right down to verse 17, explains the next pandemic will happen in one day. It'll happen one day very soon. And it's four components in it. Quick death. Forget COVID-19. This pandemic, you breathe it from the airborne and there's instant death. It's how bad it's going to be. The second notable thing of it, this is all there, is that it will actually bring great stress and a breakdown in the nations of the world where people will never have been so hopeless, the feeling. You think this feeling right now is getting to you? I mean, I think a lot of people have gone from what's happening to I'm um, getting out of here and they're starting to get angry and want to tell the government we're not going to be locked up any longer. So now you're going to get revolutions. You're going to get people who never thought that they would make a, have to make a decision. Whose side are you on? Who's, who will you serve today? Which God? The God of, of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jesus Christ? Or the gods and the false gods of your fathers and, and whatever else that you've picked up on the way? It's coming to that. Because people are going to be pushed into the corner because we refuse to believe that Jesus is Lord. But it's not too late. See, this is what's happening. So that pandemic will cause that. There will also be um, uh, fire. There, somehow there's going to be cities burning on fire. And then there is also famine shortage. So there's, it's coming. It'll happen one day. It'll strike all those four things at once to ancient Babylon, which is the, the rebuilding of what's been happening here now. But it's incredible how they're going to try and build a one-world economy with a commercial hub that all nations will have to actually trade through this hub. That's what they're heading to. I'm letting their plans out. How do I know? Revelation just tell me in there. Verse 18, you'll see they'll build a hub. They'll have uh, control of a government, the one world government. They'll build that. And there's a leader, one leader is going to rise and they'll build a commercial hub to do trade so all the nations will have to do it because of the fear of China and the fear of Russia. And the fear of other countries who are trying to take over resources and economies of the world. But what will happen is it will set it up nicely for the environment to be ready for the Antichrist to appear. Then it's action. Hey, I better stop and let you go and have a lunch. You get it? I, I can't, I've got so much more, but I think there's enough to go through there. And um, I feel today that our church is as strong as it's ever been. What does it feel like to know that greater is he, Christ, that's in the kingdom people than all of these devils? So actually, Chemosh, the, the, the uh, god Molech, and um, Marduk, and all of those ones of the ancient Babylonians, every demon that lives out there is afraid. They are scared of us. They are afraid. And what's worse... I've given you power through spiritual knowledge. And they're really peed off that this information is public. You're saying, what's next, Bishop? Wait and see. God's plans and timings are always perfect. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus right now. I ask God that you bless this word. Give it time to settle where your eyes are opened. And that's what revelation does and that's what it means to have the word of Christ come down mm -hmm. even though it's a camera but today it's liberated and we are now going into kingdom mode. The church doors are shut, the building that is. The church has now just morphed into the kingdom and now the kingdom has taken its place but we know that every devil, every demon that we confront must be moved and then we start bringing the truth that will set people free. Then you heal them. Then you help them, and then we begin to bring the kingdom of God. Like Daniel said, all the kingdoms of the earth will serve and be under and swallowed up by the kingdom of God, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, Jesus Christ. Wow, thank you. Now, right, I'm going to ask you that you just pray this with me and say this after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, may you reign long in my home and in my heart. At this time in this place, I declare that the kingdom of God is now in my spirit. In Jesus' name, I am ready 
for what's coming up. In your name I pray. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, and we'll see you again. Yeah, very cool. And, you yeah. know, we're very thankful because we haven't heard of one person um, associated with Destiny or um, Iwetabu tribes that has caught the virus. We're very thankful, mm. and um, we cool. really appreciate the fact that we had the, the service before, um, how to not have fear, have faith through this tough time, and we acknowledge so that... Um, yeah, in Psalm 91 that a lot of you have. Yeah. And so uh, good on you. And we pray that you continue to be strong. Um, have some fun. I hope you're going to have a great afternoon. Yeah. Hopefully it stays fine so you can get out, maybe have a little walk and do something. But we really appreciate uh, you logging in. And for all those that are new on today, mm. um, welcome to um, Destiny Church. Yeah. This is the way it is um, for now. Share the message. Yeah, share that message. Keep sharing it. Keep listening to it. Grow in your faith and understanding of it. God bless you. Love you.